Chapter 1. A World in Ruins In the post-apocalyptic world, most of Australia has been transformed into a desolate wasteland. Amidst this barren landscape, the Vuvulini tribe, known as the Mini Mothers, resides in a hidden oasis. One day, while harvesting peaches, young Furiosa, Alala Brown, and her friend Valkyrie, Dylan Adonis, stumble upon a gang of marauders butchering a horse within their sanctuary. Desperate to protect their home's location, Furiosa instructs Valkyrie to hide and attempts to sabotage the gang's motorcycles. However, the gang captures and kidnaps her as she whistles for help. Furiosa's mother, Mary, Charlie Fraser, and her friend, Elsa Pataki, launch a rescue mission, managing to kill several gang members but failing to save Furiosa. The remaining marauder returns to his camp, led by the ruthless Dementis, Chris Hemsworth, before the gang member can reveal the Oasis's location, Furiosa seizes an opportunity to slit his throat. Dementis, who has lost his own children in the apocalypse, confines Furiosa in a tent, promising to take her home the next day. During a sandstorm, Mary infiltrates the camp, kills Furiosa's guards, and attempts to flee with her daughter. However, Dementis and his bloodhounds track them down. The gang captures the duo, and Dementis tortures Mary in front of Furiosa to extract the Oasis's location. Despite the brutal torture, Mary remains silent until her death. Traumatized, Furiosa becomes mute, refusing to speak for years. The only reminder of her home is a seed from the peach tree she was harvesting. Chapter 2. Lessons from the Wasteland Furiosa remains a prisoner of Dementis, who disturbingly refers to her as his daughter. She is forced to witness the gang's growing size and increasing brutality. In one harrowing instance, Dementis and his gang corner a smaller group, coercing them into joining his ranks. As part of a gruesome ritual, the leader of the smaller group is chained to five motorcycles. The rest of the group must fight for a place on the motorcycles, with death as the penalty for failure. The five survivors, including another character played by Elsa Pataki, mount the motorcycles and drive off tearing their former leader apart in a brutal display of dominance. Dementis and his gang later find a brain-damaged warboy wandering in the desert, having clearly been wounded in a battle with an unknown enemy. The warboy tells Dementis of his home in the Citadel, where there is plenty of water and food. While looking through the warboy's gear, they shoot off his flare gun and it dyes Dementis' beard red, much to Dementis' pleasure. Dementis and his gigantic gang drive into the Citadel, a fortress built within rock formations that pumps clean, fresh water from beneath the surface into a cistern at the top of the rock formations, and tries to turn the people against their leader, a man named Immortan Joe, Lachie Hume. Joe, along with his aide the People Eater, John Howard, and sons Rictus, Nathan Jones, and Scrotus, Josh Hellman, mocks Dementis. He has his war boys, Joe's soldiers, lob explosives onto Dementis' gang from on high, and use cranes to hoist away many of their vehicles. Dementis retreats with what remains of his forces, but begins watching the Citadel. He learns that the Citadel trades food and water for gas from nearby Gastown and bullets from another nearby place called the Bullet Farm. Dementis and his forces manage to overrun one of the Citadel's transport trucks, called a War Rig, on its way to Gastown, and uses it to sneak in his warriors. Once inside, Dementis' soldiers ambush Gastown's forces, open the gates, and Dementis takes over. As the new man in charge, Dementis opens negotiations with Joe, threatening to use a remote detonator to blow up Gastown if Joe tries to kill him. Joe agrees to increase the amount of water and food sent to Gastown in exchange for Furiosa, healthy women are rare, so he hopes to one day have her as a breeder, and for the organic mechanic, Angus Sampson, a man with medical knowledge. Dementis rejects the deal saying that Joe will not separate him from his daughter, but Furiosa speaks up for the first time in years and says she's not his daughter and that she wants to join the Citadel. Dementis then accepts the deal. Furiosa eventually manages to escape the room where Joe keeps his enslaved wives and breeders. She then dresses as a boy and begins to work with Scrotus' team, building new vehicles and deadlier war rigs. Chapter 3. The Stowaway Years pass and Furiosa, Anya Taylor-Joy, is now a young adult. Having proven her mechanical skills, she is a highly respected crew member. Furiosa continues to pretend that she is mute. 
She secretly hatches a plan to run away so that she can return home. Praetorian Jack, Tom Burke, is Joe's best driver, having never lost a war rig during transport. As he leaves for his most recent run to Gastown and Bullet Farm, Furiosa sneaks aboard by strapping herself to the undercarriage of the war rig. Unfortunately, the war rig is attacked by a gang that splintered off from Dementis' gang and were exiled from Gastown. A major battle ensues, with the gang using all manner of gliders and flying vehicles against Jack and his crew. After the battle, Jack and Furiosa as the only survivors. Furiosa tries to steal the war rig, but Jack manages to stop her. The pair then talk, and Jack offers to make Furiosa his apprentice so that she can learn everything he knows about vehicles and combat. With that knowledge, she can make a proper escape when the time is right. Furiosa accepts his offer. Chapter 4. Homeward. More time passes and Furiosa is now a Praetorian and Jack's second-in-command. Moreover, the two have fallen in love. One night as Jack and Furiosa talk in a hidden crag atop the citadel, Jack says that he believes Furiosa is ready to make a break for freedom. He also confides that he supported her because his parents believed that nothing was more important than fighting for a cause, and he believes he is finally doing that by helping her. Jack then asks if Furiosa will let him come with her, and she agrees. On their next run to the Bullet Farm, the farm's leader the Bullet Farmer, Lee Perry, tells them that Gastown is starting to fall apart, and that he and Joe should attack Dementis while he is distracted by the Discord. When the pair arrive in Gastown, they find that the community is indeed in chaos and on the brink of collapse. Despite the food shipments, many of the people are starving due to Dementis mismanagement. As the food and water are unloaded, Dementis arrives and requests to meet with Joe and the Bullet Farmer to discuss how they can restore order to Gastown. He then provokes the citizens to riot and Furiosa, and Jack barely manage to escape alive. When they report the news to Joe, he calls the Bullet Farmer to the Citadel where he and his sons and advisors debate what to do. They eventually decide to attack Dementis and order the Praetorians to go to the Bullet Farm to bring back all the ammo they can carry. After receiving their orders, Furiosa and Jack decide to escape during this mission. At the Bullet Farm, the Citadel forces are attacked by Dementis and his soldiers. Dementis had anticipated that Joe and the Bullet Farmer would try to take all the ammo and kill him. So while the farmer was gone, he launched a surprise attack against the farm and took it for himself. The Warboys are quickly killed off and Jack is trapped inside Bullet Farm. He yells at Furiosa, who avoided the trap to escape while he launches a one-man attack on Dementis. She refuses to abandon him and enters the bullet farm willingly. The two of them manage to make a miraculous escape. Enraged by their defiance, Dementis and his forces pursue the pair. Despite their best efforts, Furiosa and Jack are captured by Dementis, who does not recognize a now fully grown Furiosa. Help.